All right, that should be good right there. All right. Okay, so this is where our double driveway gate is going to go. Now, it's going to open in, and it's going to be big enough so you can drive a car or a truck through it if you have to. Oh, wow, that actually is really convenient for us. Yeah, and this is the fence that we're going to make the gate from. It's a four-foot-tall vinyl fence, semi-private, which means there's a half-inch space. Now, we're going to go over and we're going to set the post for it. As you can see, this vinyl post is a hollow piece of vinyl. What we have to do is we have to add an aluminum I-beam inside of it to give it a strength and structure. And also, it has a nice flat surface that we can mount our hinge screws into. So this supports the gate, exactly. not the vinyl. Yes, that's right. And there's nothing worse than a saggy no, gate. No, there isn't. <laughs> so we notched out a little bit of the deck so that we can get the post right up against it tight. I'm going to mark out the asphalt so that I can cut it out with the electric jackhammer. So I'm just going to run a string line to the other side where the other post is going, and I'm going to keep it parallel with the corner of the deck. Roger, you tell me when it's good. Yeah, go to the street, Mike. Okay. A little more, a little more. I think that's good right there. Right there. All right. We'll make a mark there, and that's going to be the outside of this post. All right, Eric, now it's time to start digging these holes. All right. What we're going to use here is a regular post hole digger, and it's two shovels. You slam it into the ground, spread it apart, and you take whatever dirt you can get out of it and put it over here. All right. So let's get at it. Let's give it a go. I think I got the hang of this. That's good. All right, Roger, you start that hole, and I'll work with Eric on this one. Got it. The harder you slam that in and take more material out, the better it is, because we got to get these down 30 inches. 30 inches? That's right. That's good. All right, Mike. 30. Perfect. I'm all set. That's good. Now, I've taken the aluminum insert and attached it to the vinyl post. As you can see, now we need some concrete in the hole. Okay, great. That's where I come in. What do you want, two in there, Mike? Two's good, yeah. Now I can set the post in and plumb it up. Tell me which way you want it, Mike. Pull a little to me. Perfect. All right, Eric, we'll use some more concrete. All right. All the way around. Do you fill it all the way to the top, Mike? We'll, we'll leave three inches in case we have some grass to grow around it. You're just using the bar to make sure it's well distributed around the post? Great. Some more? One more scoop. Okay. I'm just going to finish this concrete here. Now we have both gate posts set. They have to set up in the concrete for 24 hours before we can hang the gates on them. I'm going to put this cap on. Let's go start on the six foot fence. So we had our property surveyed, and this fence is right on the property line. Well, it doesn't look like much of a problem. We can get this thing right out of here. It'll come out pretty easily, huh, Rog? Yeah, cut that for me. I'll take it right out, Mike. All right, Mike, watch That's it. Good. Let's get this one. You got Cut that? it all right? Yeah. Now we just got a few posts to do. All right, now we're ready to start installing the six foot fence. We're going to start at the high point of the yard because it's much easier to put the fence in going downhill as opposed to trying to come back up the hill. 
We're going to put the first post in as tight as we can to the neighbor's fence. You digging down 30 inches again? Same thing. We're going to get 30 inches. That looks pretty good. Now it's time to put that post in. All right, here you go. Thank you. And what we have here is the same hollow vinyl, but what we actually do is we put a pressure treated insert in up to just below the first hole. And we don't want it to impede the panel from going in. It's a mortise and tenon system. So the panel goes right in and we keep the PT just below that. But that gives the bottom of that post strength. Gives a lot of strength. How's that look? Let's see the level. I'm gonna plumb this. That's good that way. That's real good that way. I just wanna make sure that this bottom hole is above grade, which that's perfect. It's just above grade. All right, Eric, we wanna put a little concrete around each side on all four sides. All right. Put it right in the front and then around the side. That's good. Another shovel full. It's all right, we're gonna put about a foot of concrete into the hole and then we're gonna tamp the rest in. Alright, that should be good. I'm just gonna compact that concrete and then we're ready to add some of the material we took out. So why don't you shovel some of that in and I'll and keep push camping. this stuff from behind here too, sure. right? Sure. Yep. Yeah. Alright, Roger, and you make sure that we're still plumb. We're good. Okay, we're ready good? to dump it in. Yep. All right. Just keep it coming. All the way around. You still good there, Rog? Yep, right there. Thank you. I'm gonna run a string line the whole back run here, and it'll give us a point where we can plumb our post to. We're gonna run this right to the property line there. You got it here. You tell yep. me where you want it. Let's go just past the property line. Good? That looks good, Rog. All right, now we're ready to set our first panel. There's two ways of installing the fence to accommodate the grade. One is to bring it across level and then step each panel down. And the other way is to rack it down the hill where the top of the fence follows the grade. Now in this yard, there's two different grade levels. One runs from the post that we set to just beyond that tree. And the next one drops down even more to the property line. And so to get the first grade line, what I did was I put a screw in on the top of the mortise line here which is six inches above the grade. So then I put a stake in just past the tree and set the line to six inches there. And that'll give us a line to set these posts to. So let's get this first section in, Rog. Okay, I got it. Got that. Now I'm gonna drop this bottom piece into the mortise. You're gonna just tip it back. All right, now I'm gonna put this top in, Rog. How's that? Good, just hold it right there. Yep. I'm just going to put a screw in through the post into the top rail to hold it in place. And these have a little snap cap. Now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom rail. We're ready for another post. See if we can drop it in. You got it facing the right way. There you go. Okay. Okay. Kick that bottom in a little bit, Rog. You good there? Yep. Good. Perfect. Let's just check the height here. On that bottom. That's good. All the way around, just like the last one. We're gonna rack each panel to follow those two different grades.
Eric, it took three days to install the fence, but you now have an enclosed, child-safe backyard, and it all starts with this gate. Yeah, and this gate is beautiful. And it's strong, too. We mounted the screws for the hinges through the aluminum I-beam, and the gate itself is hollow, but we add pressure-treated wood on the gate uprights. And also, it has a diagonal brace, which gives it strength. And to open the gate, just simply hit this lever, swings open. If you need to get your car through, just pop this pin up, and there you go. And I see you're already enjoying the backyard. We are, thank you. We're looking forward to being able to be out here playing every day and not worried about the street. Thank you. Yeah, and the fence looks great. It matches perfectly with our neighbors. Now it looks like we have one continuous fence. Thanks so much, Mike and Roger, for helping us out. This looks great. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. Enjoy it. Thank you. Go down the slide. Here we go. Yay, go ahead. <laughs> He's having fun. They're going to get a lot of use out of that back. Yeah, they are, yeah. So, Roger, some people might say that vinyl man, maybe doesn't have the best reputation, that it might be flimsy. Well, let's just say that all vinyl isn't equal. Take a look at this one. Top rail, bottom rail, and that's it, holding the whole thing together. All right, so not much here. Now, this is the vinyl fence we installed. And the first thing you notice is the top cap, which helps stiffen the top. But the most important part is down here. In the bottom rail, there's an aluminum I-beam. That's going to stop the bottom from sagging or bowing. So this is really going to hold up. Right, and one other thing we did is remember that every post had a piece of pressure-treated 6x6 in it to hold it in place so it wasn't going to move. Okay, well, looks are important too, and as you look at this panel right here, it's pretty plain. There's not much going on. Yep. But the one that you guys installed, and you notice the top cap, that's a nice detail, and I even like the molding detail here up at the top and the bottom. Sometimes it's those little details that can make all the difference. And I love the fact that you're not going to have to paint this. So I guess if you buy the right vinyl fence, it should last for a long time. And you know what they say? Vinyl is vinyl.